survival horror game. You will fight to survive in a zombie-packed, post-apocalyptic world, designed from the bottom up to foster whichever playstyle suits you best. Home to many threats, post-apocalyptic Alberta will throw everything it can at you, from hordes of flesh-crazed undead, to AI trying to make their way through the world, and of course, other players that are doing what they can to survive. Though above all else, mistakes are killer. Plan accordingly. Our massive world is based on Alberta, Canada, and it is designed to deliver an immersive world that is packed full of landmarks begging to be explored. We've developed a huge variety of procedural generation tools with artist control in mind. These tools allow our very small team of artists to deliver a large, detailed, and immersive world. All of the tools we are currently showing will be available to the modding community. In addition to procedural generation tools that we created, we also created a metagame system that helps us keep our massive 400 kilometers squared world fresh and interesting. The metagame manages the loot economy, the electricity and water flowing through the map, trees that have been chopped down, potential sources of contamination for resources, as well as the weather, including a season cycle. AI and zombie movement are also tracked via the meta game and can trigger events especially if there's a large group or horde present. These events can be interacted with and will result in potential rewards or penalties depending on your actions. Our largest design goal is replayability. Experienced players, especially those that enjoy the PvE and cooperative elements of our game, will find every session to be different from the last. This is important because we want to play our game too. There is also a variety of buildings that you can choose to reclaim in order to aid your long-term... Eden. My home. The only home I know. Many years have passed since we found our dwelling at the foot of this mountain. In the ruins of the old world, we found shelter. In the future where our kind could flourish. It is thanks to the courage and strength of our warriors that our city can still defy the enemy. Only the bravest and strongest berserkers will survive the war against the machine. Through mana, we will grow stronger and more powerful than any machine the Alps can use against us. But not only does it give us strength, it turns barren stony soil into fertile earth, letting the world blossom again. We are the brotherhood of warriors and magic. We are...
Surrender! You'll wish you- I You're surrounded! Oh. Oh. Surround that piece of shit!
I'm gonna take off your head! Die! You shouldn't have come uh, here! Die! <laughs> are a key part of world building in WWO and we plan on writing new ones on a regular basis to expose more of the game story uh, and highlight what's happened in the world so some of the player actions become part of the lore. And they're not just fun, they'll also contain info about in-game events. Uh, in a clothing store you can change clothes or buy a new outfit. So we'll go to this clothing shop right over here and we're going to skip looking at the uh, interface and instead we'll just show you this new outfit that we got, complete with this uh, red bandana and white hat. So we look kind of badass. All right, so now the next stop is the saloon. All of the towns have saloons, which are the hubs for social activity in Wild West Online. You can buy drinks, talk to NPCs to get quests, gamble against the house, brawl against other players, and take part in other recreational activities. So we're gonna look around in this saloon a little, and we're gonna head out back here, check out where there's the card games so you can play in this saloon, uh, poker or roulette. There'll be different games in different saloons. Now, almost all open buildings can be explored, but if you take something from there that doesn't belong to you, it's theft. In this case, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna steal this whiskey bottle. So there it is, and we are gonna take it. Whoop. Alrighty, we just stole that whiskey bottle. But, since no one saw us, our reputation wasn't affected. So the moral here is, if you're gonna steal, don't get caught. Because if your reputation gets bad enough, you might end up on the most wanted list. And the sheriff's office is where you can see the most wanted board, 
and, if you want, enroll for duty as a deputy. Any player can claim a bounty. So all you do is go over to the uh, bounty board over here, click on it, open it up, and now you can drag and drop the bounties that you want to collect. So we're claiming the bounties that we want to go out and collect here. Grab a couple of those guys. All right, so now we are saying that we're going to go ride out, meet up with my friend Mike, and he and I are going to hunt down those bounties and try and collect our reward. So, before we go out and hunt those bandits, we're going to go to a rest cabin. Now, in a rest cabin, um, you can do a variety of different things. You can rest, regain stamina and health, and you can use the crafting desk to make things, access your stash of your reserve supplies, and change outfits like in a clothing store. You also can unlock the ability to fast travel between cabins. The map will show you all the places you've unlocked fast travel between, and then you can select where you want to go and pop on over there. So we are going to travel from Stone Creek to this cabin marked right over here. Hold E to travel, and bang, here we are. And now you can see stash, clothing change, crafting desks. We can rest up in here. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go find Mike, because Mike has ridden out ahead and staked out a campsite and located where he thinks the first of our bounties are. You can see that in Wild West Online, there's different environments. This is a pine forest. The pine forest is completely different from that plainsy kind of location that we saw out around Stone Creek and in Stone Creek. And so we're going to march through this forest and we're going to look for Mike and the campsite so we can meet up and rest up a bit more and then go find our bounties. Oh, there he is. Mike and I are going to team up to hunt this bounty together, and the bounty may very well have uh, his posse with him. Yo, hey, Mike. How you up, doing man? there, buddy? Good to see you. Mike has set up a campsite, and a campsite is basically a portable, reusable rest cabin. Some of them have all of the features of the rest cabins, and some just allow you to, say, change your outfit and rest up. Once we've rested up, we are going to head out. Nice. More rocks and plants. This place is a fucking maze. It just seemed to be going in circles. I have to get over these mountains. Find a way to the peak.
Why is an action-adventure game about the relationship between man and nature? We want the player to experience things, to learn how the wild world works. Your character really uh, represents the experience that you have in the game. For example, you've got a lot of tattoos on the body. Every tattoo is an experience of your character. The world is huge, so you can explore and have the feeling of freedom. We are working on an open world game with a very large world. and We can go anywhere we want, anywhere. We don't have any restriction on this side. The inspiration for Wild really comes from my childhood. I was spending a lot of time uh, in the wild nature. It's something that is there in my mind for a long time. I've been working on games where the forest and the wild world is very important. For example, Rayman started in the jungle. To develop the universe of wild, I asked the team to go in the wild nature, like a surviving experience, and feel and smell and really be immersed in what is the wild world. We wanted to go in the wild and old places to get a lot of real materials in order to build our characters and all objects in the shaman environment. The journey of an object from the real world to the game is going through a process which is photogrammetry. So we take a lot of pictures and then it's building the 3D model of the object directly from those pictures. So we can use real wild objects in our real wild game. <laughs> Every time I hire people, it is my first question. Do you have animals at home? Do you like animals? Every five seconds, we come up with a new idea of what a cool thing an animal would do. There's this kind of constant inspiration just in nature. So you've just seen our trailer at Paris Games Week, and I'm going to go through the gameplay demo and show you what's cool playing wild. Save her, shaman. I really wanted the main character to carry the values of the game, like, for example, uh, he's not a warrior, so he's got um, a wood stick because he's more a sorcerer, he's a shaman. And the main thing is the fact that you can jump from a human character to any animal. I can call an eagle, for example, a wild eagle. And what makes the game really cool is that when you call a bird like that, you can go into his uh, spirit and control the bird. And you've got a new point of view of the same world. So once you, you control your eagle, you realize that the eagle is a hunter. And here, uh, we want to hunt a new animal because in wild, you can catch any animal and summon the divinity of this animal. Another very nice thing is that you can call giant bears. And you can use them as very powerful vehicles. It's a very nice way to have another perspective, another point of view of the same game. But your biggest enemy in wild is the other humans. 
If, for example, we are arriving in a cannibal camp, which is very dangerous. So I'm going to use another animal. And this is very interesting because you will see here combinations of gameplays with different animals. And then attack. Then I can continue my way to the giant divinity. My goal is to then take my snake and summon the snake divinity. The divinities represent the forces of nature. They can be unpredictable, they can be dangerous. Maybe the divinity will ask for a very dangerous challenge to prove that I have the knowledge of the snakes. So everything is never easy win. You have to prove that you understand the world of wise.